Join me today on Walk With History as we talk about some notable people buried here in Alexandria, Virginia. It's actually when this cemetery ran out of space in 1864 that Meeg starts to look for another area and they find Arlington Estate, Robert E. Lee's former home, it becomes Arlington National Cemetery. The cemeteries here in Alexandria, they're as, as old as they are, are separated by religion. So when you get here, it's St. Paul's Episcopal Cemetery. It's the Presbyterian Cemetery. It's the Methodist Protestant Cemetery. So these are very much separated by religion. Again, Hamilton and Wilkes, they have um, flyers here that can help you find the graves. If you go straight down Wilkes here and don't turn on Hamilton, you hit the National Cemetery. And that's where all the national graves are. All the soldiers are buried down there. McLean and McLean was born May 3rd, 1814 to June 5th, 1882. And you can kind of see it there to the 68th year of his age. What's interesting about McLean is he was a grocer from Manassas, Virginia, and his um, his house was involved in the first battle of the Civil War, the Battle of Bull Run in 1861 and he was so upset uh, about the fighting that happened right by his house that he moved and he moved away to Appomattox and thinking he would escape the war thinking he would be, he would be safe and then in 1865 Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant met in his house in Appomattox and that's where the surrender of the Civil War took place so Unfortunately, a Wilmer McLean couldn't escape the war altogether. He was involved in the very first battle and the very end. Uh, and this is his grave here. And he's buried beside his wife, Virginia, and it looks like their daughter. Seemed to be at the wrong place at the wrong time and then the uh, right place at the right time. So when you visit Appomattox and you visit the home where the surrender took place for the Civil War, you're visiting the McLean home. And he's actually within view of the female stranger and we've done that video before. So the female stranger is pretty much right across the roadway and then McLean is right here. So this is the grave of Robert Allison Jr. And he has a very unique story. The British occupation of Alexandria and Washington DC only lasted five days in 1814. The city surrendered all its merchant ships, the military supplies and goods, and its warehouses. The only shots fired after British ships sailed out of Alexandria and down the Potomac was a small battery at White House Landing. And they engaged the British ships that came past, and then they ended up foundering on the shoals. One of the Americans killed in the two-day battle of the White House Landing was Robert Allison Jr. grave of Dennis Ramsey and Colonel Dennis Ramsey fought in the Revolutionary War one of George Washington's pallbearers he's buried here with his family he is not far away from Allison they're almost like right beside each other here so here's Ramsey Allison is right over there so you walk down the main road and then they're very close here in proximity but here's Dennis Ramsey Uh, this was founded in 1895 as a non-denominational segregated cemetery for Alexandria's African Americans. Uh, it's named in honor of Frederick Douglass, who was an American abolitionist and writer, statesman, 
orator and former slave from the Douglas Cemetery. You cross Wilk Street is the grave of Julius Campbell Jr. And you know Julius Campbell Jr. from Remember the Titans. Honesty? You want honesty? All right, honestly, I think you're nothing. Nothing but a pure waste of God-given talent. You don't listen to nobody, man. Not even Doc or Boone. Shiver push on the line every time, man. You blow right past them. I'm supposed to wear myself out for the team? What team? No. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look out for myself and I'm going to get mine. See, man, that's the worst attitude I ever heard. Attitude reflect leadership. Yeah. December 5th, 1953 to December 25th, 2019. Beloved father, grandfather, husband, son, brother, uncle, you will forever be loved and missed. And on the other side is his picture and his number, 81. Remember the Titan. So I love the movie Remember the Titans. As far as football movies are concerned, and I'm a big football fan because my father was a high school football coach. As far as football movies are concerned, it's my, probably my favorite. Remember the Titans is probably my favorite. And Julius Campbell, uh, in the movie, if you remember, he's the African-American captain of the football team. So what's going on in that movie? I have some history here. So in Alexandria, 1971, which is kind of late when you think about it, the black high school Francis Hammond and the white high school George Washington became T.C. Williams High School in 1971. And a junior on the football team stepped up as a leader and that was Julius Campbell. His real test of his athletic ability and character came in the 1971-1972 season after the city moved all high school juniors and t seniors to T.C. Williams. So they put all uh, African Americans and whites into one high school, T.C. Williams High School. And all players had to compete to make the sports teams and they had to compete against each other. And so the high school was here in Alexandria. Can you imagine? Campbell and linebacker Jerry Bertier became very close friends and stepped up as leaders, and Bertier was white. I just love that movie, and I love the, their friendship between the two. They were both the captains of the football team. Here's a football team who's getting over their racial differences to overcome and to become champions of the entire state. It made the high school come together. It made the people of Alexandria come together. So what Campbell did with his fellow teammates is just amazing and uh, with his athletic ability he was able to overcome such adversity but he's not forgotten and uh definitely want to celebrate him all right you really stuck him campbell yeah i love me a little contact beady this is left side strong side left side strong side left side strong side left side, strong side. Left side. Strong side. Left side. Left side. I'm here with James Mason, and he's in the Episcopal side of the cemetery here at Alexandria. What's so interesting about James Mason, he's one of the first Virginia representatives to go with the Confederate Congress in February of 1861. He gives, he's giving a diplomatic assignment, which is very interesting. So he set sail on a Confederate convoy to Britain to have England help the Confederacy during the Civil War. And they're on the RMS Trent, but that ship was stopped by an American Union ship on November 8th, 1861. And the Trent Affair, as it comes to be known, threatens to bring Britain into the war with the United States because they would side with the Confederacy, because who knows what the Confederacy would give them. Who knows what would have happened if they would have made it over to England, and maybe they would have won to back the Confederacy in the war. But thank goodness they were stopped. And then England saw the Confederacy really wasn't the winning side and decided not to enter the war at all. So I'm in front of the grave of Samuel Cooper, Major Samuel Cooper, who fought in the Revolutionary War. He actually, it says here, he fought at Bunker Hill, Trenton, Brandywine, Germantown, and Monmouth. He's a valiant soldier. Uh, he was very young in 1776. He was born in 1756. 
So he was about 20 years old uh, on the onset of 1776. But um, he was bar he was part of the Boston Tea Party, and as the at the Boston Tea Party, he was very young. But what's interesting is he's buried here beside probably his son, Samuel Cooper, who became a general in the Confederacy. And what's interesting about this Samuel Cooper, Confederate general, is his rank was even higher than Robert E. Lee. That's pretty amazing. Um, the CSA is Confederate States of America. He has the star, and then his father beside him has the you know, Daughters of the American Revolution, and then Sons of the American Revolution. He has both of those stars. I'm here in the National Cemetery of Alexandria. This is a cemetery where you have to have served in the United States military to have been to be buried here. These were started during the Civil War when so many casualties were happening and they needed to uh, find a way to bury the men who had given their lives in pursuit of keeping the Union together. Interesting memorial here at uh, Alexandria's National Cemetery is in honor of Peter Carroll, Samuel Goshnell, George Washington Huntington, and Christopher Farley, who lost their lives April 24th, 1865, while in the pursuit of Booth, the assassin of our beloved president, Abraham Lincoln. It's actually when this cemetery ran out of space in 1864 that Meigs starts to look for another area and they find Arlington Estate, Robert E. Lee's former home, it becomes Arlington National Cemetery. So behind Alexandria National Cemetery, you see this kind of waterway it's in the back part of the cemetery. It's called Hoof's Run. And this waterway has a very interesting history. So when enslaved ships would come over here to America and dock in Alexandria, enslaved men, women, and children who were held in the slave prisons here and the slave markets here were forced to bathe here in Hoof's Run prior to making prior to being sold, uh, prior to making their journeys into Mississippi, into Alabama, into Louisiana. And of course, after making that trek across Africa, you know, they were lying in their own filth. They were forced to lie in their own filth. And so this is where they would bring them to bathe them. And so it's an important part of Alexandria's history. Like I said, it's here on the backside of the Alexandria National Cemetery. So this entire area, the cemetery complex came into being after a yellow fever epidemic that swept Alexandria in 1803. It overwhelmed the town. Uh, over 300 people died. These 13 separate cemeteries and the complex consists of Christian and Jewish cemeteries. And nine of the cemeteries are still active today, but there's over 35,000 people buried in these cemeteries. Uh, we just did a couple of them today for you, a couple of the more notable ones, and of course the National Cemetery here. But if you ever get a chance to get out here and visit, I definitely recommend it. It was very historic, very interesting, lots of stories, lots of history, and it's all waiting here for you. It's open to the public, and it's right here in the heart of Alexandria, Virginia. On to my next Walk with History.